Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Glad to have you guys here. On this Friday, August 23rd, 2024, thank you for tuning in. Uh, listen, guys, <clears throat> it's finally happened. It's going to be really, really good for silver and uh, now and gold and cryptos. Because I don't think I see this Fed going into a new tightening cycle anytime soon. Economy's way too weak. And it's going to be getting weaker. Uh, there's a delayed effect on what the Fed's already done. And it's going to take sig a significant amount to pull the economy out of it. It's going to take a significant amount of stimulus. That stimulus is what's going to... I think... I, I'll tell you honestly, I think they're, they're going to have to... Uh, go into stimulus measures that and and you know they're not really reporting on any of this stuff anymore they just do it behind the scenes we don't even know where they're going to be pumping the money but the money pumping's going to continue and it's going to get stronger and stronger now they have to because the whole system's on an exponential function with the dollar and they tried to delay this exponential function, but behind the scenes, they didn't delay that exponential function. What they did was is they, they tightened monetary policy. They caused a little bit of minor, I'll call it minor, disinflation. But that, what's running in the background that exponential function that the dollar's on continued while they were doing all that. In other words, the hockey stick that the dollar's on, that hockey stick that began, that exponential function that began all the way back when the Fed was created, it moves slow, very slow, and that's how exponential functions work. It moves very slow at first. For the first hundred years, it moved awful slow. It's like watching grass grow. But we saw our dollar lose like 98% of its purchasing power. That exponential function is continuing in the background while they did all this monetary tightening, which is art an artificial way because you cannot taper a Ponzi scheme. So now that they're starting to let loose of the, of the, of the they're starting to let it go. They're starting, in other words, they're not tightening. They're, they're, they're having to go to a, a looser monetary policy. We're going to see uh, the bull market in gold and silver really begin now. Now. Now is when it starts to begin. This is just the beginning. This is the, this is the opening salvo. This is, this is the beginning of it. The beginning, I don't see the beginning as being... Uh, what happened when we saw silver rise from $22 up to 30 Actually, it touched 32 I don't really see that as the beginning. This is the beginning now. And you got to understand that something's going to happen here. Uh, as the silver price goes up with all this, demand's only going to increase as the dollar loses more and more value. And they got a certain amount of silver that's available for sale that's behind the scenes. Stockpiles, what you call stockpiles. Don't know how large those stockpiles are, but they're not... Uh, they've been dipping into them. They have to because silver's been going into a deficit every year. Uh, and they've been doing that for several years now. Those stockpiles are going to run out, especially when demand goes up. And I believe that when the silver price crosses $60 and it's on its way up, it's about there where you're going to find that you're not able to obtain supply, uh, uh, the ordinary person. Now, they're going to shuttle the supply off to industry because they cannot possibly uh, shut industry down. They need the silver to make things, things that we need in our house. Silver's in almost everything you buy. It's even in your shorts. <laughs> it's in your socks. Industry's still going to be supplied. 
it's your retail silver sales and stuff, which are on the increase, and they're going to continue to increase, especially now. It's going to keep digging into that until it goes into short supply. And then, then the price, then the price, when it crosses that line, probably around 60 bucks, and it shoots up, it's really shooting up, it's going to be hard to obtain it. And I think that's when, uh, and this is what I'm predicting, that the government's going to have to step in and do something about it. And I think probably the simplest thing for them to do is to say, hey, you know what? Um, industry's having a hard time sourcing silver. Uh, we're just going to make it so that the people who are speculators, they'll come, they're going to do just like Nixon did in 1971 when he cut the gold, the, the, uh, when he said, hey, we're going to stop the speculators. They're going to use that same terminology. They're going to call everybody out there that's buying silver speculators. We got to stop the speculators. Bang -o. You need a license now to buy the stuff. And, of course, this will be perfect for them because they can give a license to anybody who they want. <laughs> the rich people will still be able to buy the stuff. But you aren't going to be able to buy it unless you're able to get a license. That's probably where they're going to go with it. You'll be allowed to sell, but you're not going to be allowed to buy. And there's not going to be any to be able to buy anyway. Your silver de All these people who are retail silver sellers, you know them out there. All the gold silver bulls and the, and the Kitco's and the, and the Ap Apmexis. Well, you probably have a period where they're, they're all short on supply and you're not able to buy the silver maybe that you want. It'll be out of this, out of that, out of something else. And it's that long in that time, and the price is going to the moon. It's a long in that time frame, and I'm thinking it's around $60 silver when you're going to see this happen. And it's be probably, I don't know what will happen with the spot price and premiums. Uh, if the spot price doesn't keep up, then you're going to see a massive premium. But ultimately, where we're going with all this is I would not be a bit surprised probably within the next 24 months to see silver, triple-digit silver. So what an investment opportunity. You guys got staring you right in the face right now. And, and just take a look at this. Uh, pile pivot is complete. Uh, gold stocks, Bitcoin bonds surge. As the Fed chair says, time has come for the polity to adjust. Policy adjustment time. <laughs> Here it comes. Here comes the inflation again. They're, they're giving up. They're having to give up because they have their choice. They can destroy the economy that supports them and keeps them in money and in power. Or they can capitulate. And that's what they're doing right here. You see it. They're getting ready to capitulate. And I knew that they were going to do this all along. The big question mark was when. When's it coming? Well, it's getting ready to start now, and it's only going to get worse and worse. Maybe, I don't know, I mean, if inflation goes too high, you know, maybe they will run back and try to... But, you know, if, if they try, try this on a second time with tightening... It's going to be even harder, and it's, they're going to be fighting even into even heavier headwinds and heavier inflation than they're, they're fighting now. And it's only going to be a Hail Mary pass to try to get them through the... You know, it's over. The game, It's basically game over now at this point. Inflation's going to win because they have to keep the economy going, and that requires new, fresh, printed money. Because that's what the system runs on. That's the oil that lubricates the system. I mean, you can't let your car run run low on oil for very long. Or the engine will seize up. And that's the way with our economy. Our economy, it'll seize up. It would quite literally freeze. Banks, banks would all go under. Uh, uh, there would be... Uh, within the interbanking system, they would stop lending to one another... I mean, we're almost getting to that point, you know, now when they're shifting. Why do you think they're shifting? They're shifting because they have to. 
They know that the system's going to start to deflate on them. They have to keep the bubbles popped up and everything. It's a, the everything bubble. They have to keep this all this going. And so they're going to have to keep. And now, so now they're talking about, oh, when are we going to, to, to become dovish? It says Powell is dovish across the board now. Same stage he was two years ago. Signal the Fed would accept the recession as the price of restoring inflation. The cooling in the labor markets is unmistakable. Uh, he says the time has come for the policy to readjust. The direction of travel is clear. The timing and place of rate cuts will depend on incoming data. They're always saying that. They're always data dependent. That they're always behind the curve <laughs> as well. So here we go, guys. We're heading into this thing. Uh, taking a look at this. Uh, NATO air base in Germany raises security level due to potential threat. Well, they're worried right now. It says the NATO air base in Germany has raised its security level based on intelligence information indicating a potential threat. All non-mission essential staff have been sent home as precautionary measure. It says the uh, base has said the threat level has been raised to Charlie, the second highest in four states of alert, alert, which is defined as an incident that has occurred or intelligence has been receiving information indicating that some form of terrorist action against NATO organization or personnel is highly likely. Well, I'm going to tell you guys what. Uh, we're not really in, in full-scale war yet. You know? Uh, yeah, there's wars going on. Uh, got war in Ukraine going on with Russia. You know, we got uh, a war in, in the Middle East going on, you know. But we're not at full-scale war yet. You know, when full-scale war happens, the gloves come off. And then these potential threats become real threats. Uh, they, they, everything changes. And the size and scope of what they will do in war. You know, there's an old saying, all's fair in love and war. Let's hope that full-scale war does not break out because they, they the enemy... You know, and I mean, a lot of people just don't get it. They don't understand it. And I find it hard, the logic it takes to get your head around war. It, it, it's, it's hard to understand it, but, but a lot of people just don't get it. They don't understand there's a lot of people over here in the West who are actually rooting for, um, for Russia and so on. They, they, uh, but do you realize when full-scale war breaks out, that at that point, the enemy wants you dead. Think about that for a minute. It's hard to get your head around it. But if full-scale World War III were to break out and say it was between the United States and Russia... then at that point forward, the enemy doesn't care what happens to you by whatever they're going to do. If they cut your internet cable so that you got no internet and they're, and they're put, throwing you into chaos, well, that's what they wanted to do. In fact, they want the worst result possible for that for you. Ultimately, they want you gone. And that's why they did it. When full-scale war breaks out. Just just saying, guys. Now, you know, I'll tell you what. Today, the silver price is $29.61. It's up 68 cents on the day so far. So it's looking good. We got the markets doing pretty good here, you know. Uh, all on this news that the free, cheap, easy money is getting ready to come back. Uh, banks will start lending again pretty soon, you know, and uh, 
we've completed this part of this cycle now and so they're going back they're basically what it's like is say you had to have water for something or another and some guy went out and kinked the hose you know it's like federal chairman Powell has kinked the hose of money for a while, quite a while now he's had it kinked now they're going to unkink the hose again that's basically what it's all about because they realize that that if they don't unkink the hose that the whole system's going to start to collapse it's already it's already going down it's starting to collapse right now but it hasn't really fully manifested itself yet uh, are they ahead of it the collapse I don't think so I think it's ahead of them I think they think that they're getting ahead of it but they're, they're not the terminal rate for the Fed was quite a while in our rear, rear, rear view mirror they passed it they were looking for it ahead they were like it's a kind of like a guy going down the interstate you know and he missed his turn but he doesn't know he missed his turn you know I mean he, he, he maybe his wife was at the map you know and she was or nowadays it's on the phone you know you got your maps on the phone maybe she just had her head down not paying attention she went on past it and he's continuing to drive he doesn't realize he's missed his turn but he missed the turn it's in the it's in it's back there and he's looking for it he's saying where is it where is it where's that where's that exit we were supposed to take but you passed it two miles back he doesn't know that that's what the fed is right now they've passed the terminal right they didn't know they passed it it's in the rearview mirror quite a long ways now they're finally making the adjustment and trying to get back on course again to pump the money into the system that the system needs to function. But as soon as you start pumping that money back in the system again, inflation is baked into the cake. All the way back to 1914, they, they baked the inflation in. It, it was a Ponzi scheme, and Ponzi schemes are on an exponential function. And this Ponzi scheme ensures that the dollar's going to keep inflating and inflating and inflating until it's worth nothing. <laughs> and there's no way to stop that. Just kind of like Bitcoin, you know, the whole thing with Bitcoin is all baked in that there's going to be less and less and less Bitcoin forever. It's baked in. Well, this is the exact opposite. There's going to be more and more dollars forever. It's baked in. So one's on a, a one, one Bitcoin is on a is a deflationary it's just the exact opposite of of inflationary what the dollar is is inflationary it's going to inflate 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 never stop until it's worth nothing and bitcoin is going to keep going any other direction until there's none left and you know when something gets scarcer and rarer and rarer it becomes worth more and more it's either that or bust with the cryptocurrencies at this point i don't really think it's going to bust Where's it going in the end? Well, you better make sure you have a little bit. You don't need very much, I don't think. And, and, and you know, I mean, as far as your gold and silver are concerned, they're the same thing. They're deflationary like Bitcoin. And ultimately, where are they going to go compared to the dollar? In the same route. Just going to keep going up and up and up. Dollar's going to keep going down and down and down. And in the end, you know, your wages are not going to keep up. And it's going to keep moving through the people in tears. Now, it's already moved through in America, the first tier of people that are in the lower wage earners and stuff, the gig workers and stuff like that. They're having a hard time now. Hard time paying the bills and everything else. You know, it moved through that tier, and soon the next wave of inflation is going to move through the next tier up of people. You know, the people who are, are, who are not really suffering quite yet. It's coming for you. And it's going to keep moving up through the tiers. Until more and more people are dissatisfied with the system. Uh, so let's take a look at the markets right now. Our, our S&P 500 right now is, is up 14 points at 5,585. The Dow Jones is up 148 points at 40,860. Uh, we're looking at our crude oil going up in price too. It's up a dollar seventy-five today at seventy-four dollars and seventy-six cents. Bitcoin's going up as well. Uh, that's priced in Canadian though. Uh, let me see. I don't know. I might be able to get it in American here on this. 
Uh, look at that, $83,000 Canadian. That shows you the difference between the American and Canadian dollar. Uh, okay, so, so, yeah. I don't really see it in the, uh, how I can change it into American here. But it's up today. 1400 so it's up about a thousand or it was is it across 60,000 yet US I'm not sure anyway listen guys quite a world we live in we're on the edges of war big time war and also we gotta uh, keep our eye now really gotta keep our eye on the financial system as they really when they start to cut interest rates we gotta watch the markets uh, my tendency is to think initially we're going to see a drop when they start cutting interest rates again. A drop in the market. But I think that that's only going to be temporary as the rates come down. And, you know, they're going to... They, are they talking about a 50 basis point rate cut to start it off? I think that's where they should go. Probably a whole percent as far as I'm concerned. You know, I mean, you can't taper a Ponzi scheme. You just got to keep the money pumping out there to keep the economy rattling along until the until the dollar's worth zero. You know, and you know, toward the end, it goes faster and faster and faster because it is on an exponential fun function. And ultimately, where does all this going in the end? It's going to some sort of a reset, guys. That's where it ends. But they have to wait. They can't do the reset mid. It's kind of like when you're driving along in your car, you know. You can't get out of the car until the car comes to a stop. Well, that's the way with the, the, the dollar's uh, hyperinflation. You can't reset all the currencies and everything until it gets to a point where it's... If, see, because everybody's invested in the dollar. If you mess with that, if you say, okay, we're going to reset, what does that really mean if everybody's invested in the currency you're trying to reset? you got to wait until the currency's valueless. Then you can reset it. Then you can bring out something new. Or, or Then you have to. You have to. Anyway, thank you guys for listening to the show. You guys have a great afternoon. And we'll catch you guys uh, in the next one. Uh, bye-bye.